Hey, what's up guys, it's Seb from Workbench and this week we're gonna do a fake scan in cinema. Today we're gonna create a scanning setup, much like you see here. The setup is really simple and once it's created, you can reuse it on pretty much anything. We're gonna go pretty quickly, so if you want specifics on settings or the final composite, be sure to download the project files. So in this first scene, I created just a bunch of random objects, a landscape, a sphere, or whatever. Um, and then I created a plane and that's what we're gonna use to create our scanner. So I'm gonna go in and I'm going to go to Redshift and I'm gonna create a new material, an incandescent. And inside this incandescent, I'm gonna need two nodes. I'm gonna need a ramp and a curvature node. I'm going to pipe in the curvature node into the ramp, and then I'm going to pipe the ramp into the incandescent illumination alpha. So I'm going to really quickly change my setup here just a little bit here. I'm going to make that a tab. So I'm not sure if you can notice it here or not, but I have a really faint line here. So it's already working, but we need to adjust some things here. So to start off with, I'm going to go to general here. And I'm going to change this to three and I'm going to set my render samples to 128. And then in my remap node, I'm going to change a couple things here too. So I'm going to make the max to two, my contrast to two, um, my bias to 0.6 and my gain to 0.3. So you can see starting to see it more, but I, it's, I'd like to see it a little more. So I'm gonna go into the ramp here and I'm gonna crush this a little bit. Now you have to be careful not to crush it too much because what will happen is you'll start to get the plane that it's on as well. So I just kinda need to back it off here just a little bit, somewhere in there, more or less. And I'm gonna check to make sure that plane is not there, which it is not. So this is already working. So if I come back here and I look and I animate this, you can see that it works really pretty good. Now, I think the one thing that we can help change to make this a little better is I'm gonna change this from convex to concave. So now you can see that's a much sharper line. You can see it just deforms to all these shapes. So one thing to note here you can tell that we have a really nice smooth shape, but if I went into the sphere and I, I believe the sphere by default when you import it is 16. And even though render perfect is on in Redshift, that doesn't really matter. But you can see that the line gets a little jaggedy. So the way to combat that is to make this 64. So. That's it for this setup. I mean, it's really pretty simple. So let me show you how I created the animation. So let me walk you through this setup. It's really simple. What I have going on here is we have our scan line from the previous setup and I have two cubes here and those do two different things and I'll explain here. And I have them all underneath a null that's animated. And that null is animated from right to left. So this cube here, I'm using for two things. I'm using it for a vertex map, and I'm also using it for the removal of the shaded version of the camera. And I should note, I did not model this. I got this model from a website called grabcad.com, I believe. I'll leave a link in the description. You'll also note that the model here is named Voronoi Fracture. If you want more information on how I use Voronoi to break up the object, check out the tutorial link I left in the description. So we took this object and we stuck it inside of a bool. And I created an instance of the cube and I put it in the bool here. And the reason I'm using an instance is because I wanted to animate everything one time. And since I'm using this for a couple different things on a couple different objects, I didn't want to animate them all. It was just faster and lazier. This animates this way and cuts the shape. And then I'm also using it to create a vertex map that I'm using inside the shader. So let me show you, let me play this forward a little bit here. You can see this vertex map is going with the cut. So how I'm creating these vertex maps is I'm using the XP vertex map and the setups of these things are super easy. So it's XP vertex map and then in here, tell it what object you want to point it to. So it's pointing here. I have it set to polygons and I have that cube in here. 
And on this one, I have it set to just set weight. So once it sets that weight, it stays that way. And on the other one, which is this vertex map here, I have it set to set weight, then fade. So it'll basically create a line where that object is going. And this cube here is just like a little thin cube. And again, I'm just using that in a shader. This dissolves away. And the other object, which is underneath, which is set up exactly the same way, except for the bool here is set to a intersect B. So it's everything that's inside this cube instance will be revealed. So let me take you through the shaders here. Um, they're really simple shaders. There's nothing really super fancy about them, but they're kind of cool. So to start off with, this is the black shader here. This looks complicated, but it's really not super complicated. So here what I'm doing is I'm essentially wearing away the edges a little bit. So I created this map that is a basically using the aluminum preset and did not change anything in there. And then I have a curvature node piped into a ramp. And let me pull this back out and put it over here so you can actually see what's going on. If you render this out right now, here's the camera. So if I show you just this and see this is our curvature node and I'm just using it to highlight some edges. And then I'm taking a noise shader this is what that looks like. And I'm taking those highlights and I'm eroding them away. So you're only getting those highlights in certain areas. So that's what that looks like there. And then I'm taking that and I'm using a material blender and I'm using this to reveal the silver material. Yeah, so this is being dropped on top of the base shader, which is this. And this shader is also aluminum, but I have the diffuse set to black. And the only other thing I'm doing here is I have a noise that I'm adding a bump to it. Now, if you remember, I also talked about the vertex map uh, and I'm taking that vertex map and piping it into the ramp and I'm just using it as an opacity node so that when the bool comes off, so you don't get like that really sharp, ugly line, it's, it gives it just a little bit of softness, a little bit of feather there. And if we zoom in here, you can see that there's our little edge wear that we created and you can also see how this is has a little bit of a feather on here from the vertex map so let me take you through the second portion of the shaders so this shader is built very similar to the other one so let me take you through that setup so if we look here i have a fresnel so if we look at the fresnel here this is what it looks like there and i have that sent into a ramp so i'm kind of crushing it a little bit and then i also have a curvature node there and then i'm pushing both of those into a color layer shader, which gives us that. And again, I'm using that vertex map that we created here to feather the edge in the transition area. Then I'm taking this and I'm pumping it into a material here. And this material is really simple. It's just the base material, how it comes by default. I had it set to aluminum, so I just left it that way. Um, look at that. This is what that looks like. Taking the color layer shader and I'm piping it into the opacity color. And I'm also piping it into the overall color. And then I change the emission color to red and I added a little bit of emission to it just to give it a little bit of extra hot spots on it. The last step I did was I took this in and I created some X particles work. So let me show you what that scene looks like. So I'm emitting particles into a group and then that group has no speed and no radius, so they're essentially invisible particles. And then I'm using a change group modifier to reveal the particles. I'm basically putting them into another group, and then I'm, that group has the particles set to radius of two. So again, we're using our Voronoi fracture, and this is where I'm using the, the fracture portion of this. So because we fractured it, I got this selection tag here, Everywhere they had a, a fracture, it gave me a selection on that very edge. And that's what I'm using to emit my particles. So I set my emitter to object. I put the Voronoi in there and then I put that selection tag in here. I set this to emit edges. I set it to even distribution, set to one. And then in the, my emissions, I have it set to shot and it shoots for one frame, 52. And I removed a couple zeros here, but I had it to 100,000 particles. So animation wise, I have our scan line here and I have the Voronoi hidden so that it doesn't render. 
So the only thing we're getting is the particles and the line. And then he, in here, I have a linear field that I'm using to reveal the particles. And that linear field is in here in the XP change group. And it's in the fall off tab. That's pretty much it. It's pretty simple. Now we took all of this stuff, this scene and the previous scene, and we rendered them out with an alpha channel and comped them in After Effects. All right, so that's it for this week. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, leave in the comments down below. And if you'd like to help support what we do, go to patreon.com forward slash workbench. I'm Sev, and we will catch you next time.